Hey everybody, thanks for watching the CB vlog here on YouTube. Uh, you guys know what to do to help out. You can just go down and hit that subscribe button, uh, leave a couple comments, whatever you like. It's a big help. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, you can check out patreon.com slash commandersbrew uh, and donate to the show directly. Uh, and you can get in on the Discord and help us actually brew the decks when we make them and all that sort of stuff. So check us out, patreon.com slash Commander's Brew. Uh, but let's get to today's main topic. <laughs> yeah, so uh, today I just wanted to uh, talk about um, uh, something that was on a lot of the Commander community's mind, uh, especially the like um, online community, kind of like uh, everyone on Twitter. Magic Twitter was kind of a, all a Twitter about this one, which was um, the recent uh, announcement from the um, Rules Committee to make no changes to the ban list. Uh, it seems as though the poor rules committee can't win. Uh, either they ban, win. either you ban something and everyone's mad, or you don't ban something and everyone's mad. So I guess they're just diff two different groups of people. Um, so I guess uh, just a little bit of background on this, in case you weren't paying attention to this or are not super active on like magic Twitter. Um, the, ba the, the rules committee uh, made no changes to the ban list. And uh, leading up to this, however, um, a, a group, I don't know how exactly how big, because obviously we don't, we don't know, but it seemed like a fairly large group of people uh, on Magic, sort of on like the uh, subreddits, uh, on Twitter, a lot of competitive players were uh, talking about the need to ban Flash. Now, whether or not you're, uh, you agree with this as a competitive player, uh, that's, you know, there, there's a discussion there at the very least, right? Um, some people were feeling that it was, um, you needed to include it in basically every deck. Like this is like a card that if you can fit it in your deck, you fit it in and you run this sort of package of cards, right? With, um, with Protean Hulk. Yeah, yeah. I mean the classic, right? Flash Hulk, right? Um, so uh, this this is why sort, sort of people in, in the competitive uh, uh, community were sort of talking about this. They wanted it banned. There was no ban and then they were kind of upset about it. So that sparked this whole discussion online about like, you know, whose needs are the rules committee serving, so on and so forth. I, under our account, put out a tweet that was like, hey, why don't we just have, why, why can't why can't competitive EDH just have their own ban list and their own rules committee? Because it seems like they have a whole different set of needs than regular commander, right? So um, that sparked an online discussion in, that sparked a discussion in our mentions about whether or not um, sort of splitting the format is, is a good idea for either format, right? Um, now, I'm not a competitive player, admittedly. Sean, you, you aren't either. We are not. We are very much casual commander players. Um, and I don't think... I just wanted to put this out there. Doing this is strictly to serve the competitive players and to serve what those players need, um, which it seems like from this issue is, is kind of is something different than what casual players need. There's a whole host of like weird things about this also, right? So um, one of them being uh, this, basically what we're talking about here is splitting this along an ideology, which is why it's so weird and so different, right? Like normally car, uh, 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 formats are split by like specific rules, like yes. um, deck size or, uh, pool of cards, standard, modern, uh, uh, rarity, Pioneer. popper, exactly, right? Pioneer. Uh, Commander itself is based on singleton and multiplayer. So these are like hard rules that we can look at and see, and we can see them in a game, and you can look at a person's deck and know what uh, format that it fits into, right? Whereas the split between what, what would be regular Commander and competitive Commander, or CEDH, is... is a mindset, right? It's um, it's this idea that we uh, are either uh, trying just sitting down to have a casual, fun game, and we're not trying to win as fast as possible, or we're trying to tune our decks to the nth degree and make it uh, make them as efficient and and as best at winning as we can. The highest um, win percentage possible right. with your ninety nine. And there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Right, like this is the thing, right? Like if that's how you want to have fun in Commander, either way, whether you whether you want to play competitive or not, you can do that. That's totally fun. But if you are the type of player that you you know that you want to play competitively, you like to play these types of decks, and then when you sit down into a competitive match, whether it's for prizes at like a GP or something, or at your store where they have like now we're gonna have like a sanctioned CEDH 
you know, tournament or something like that. Uh, it'd be nice if, you know, the, the, the rules committee that you have that, that, that oversees your game is actually looking out for your format, which it's a tough job right now that the rules committee has because they have the balance, this like thing where some people want to be an, a, like a, like every other magic format and win as soon as they can, or this weird magic format that we have where it's like, Hey man, just let us play around for a while. You know, like <laughs> yeah. no, some of us don't even want to win really, <laughs> you know, like that is a bizarre thing to want in this, in this, what is like at its core, a competitive game. Like we're all trying to win technically, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's such a strange thing. What do you think? This is such an interesting topic. I, I'm drawn to like I think people people love to react strongly out of like the unknown and everything. When people say if you split the format, it will kill the format. Maybe there because I'm I'm trying my best here. Like I can the best I can do is to try to put myself in the shoes of a competitive EDH player mm -hmm. uh, because I know how I feel as a casual player. Uh, it wouldn't affect me at all to make a new ban list for a CD CEDH games versus regular casual quote unquote non CEDH games because I only play non CEDH. My ban list wouldn't change in theory. Right. Uh, maybe some things come off. Fine, but if if I'm a competitive EDH player, I guess I would be. I guess I I know people are always afraid of bans. One of the biggest reason people hate bans is because they lose their deck. And in the case of CEDH, you've got some original duels in there. You've got some very expensive cards. So if you've got one CEDH deck and it's Flash Hulk, and they're like, "Don't ban Flash, please," because if you do, I have no, I don't have a deck now. I have to mm -hmm. sell everything and I have to get a whole new deck. And if if I'm just trying to speculate here. If the CEDH community has its own ban list, that's I'm going to assume this discussion takes the assumption that if this were to happen, someone who knows CEDH well handles these bans. Right. These would not be random bans that people just want. Like these would be well thought out, I'm going to assume. So that that's where I'm coming from. And if that keeps happening, why do we ban cards? We ban cards when a format gets homogenous. Yeah. When 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 only one deck seems to be showing up, we do bans so that it becomes a more diverse and more interesting format. I think that's what we all want. Uh, I don't think CEDH players want a format where there is the optimal 99 that everyone has figured out you can assemble combos that are uninteractable because you can protect them with these cards and you can the way they work and whoever wins the die roll will probably win the game every time like i don't think anyone wants that format so a good committee who knows what they're doing with bans is going to ban a card here or there but that doesn't stop right if you ban if, if you ban flash and i lose my whole deck and i have to sell cards and trade in and get a whole new deck what if that becomes the best deck? Then something gets banned again. Now I got to do the whole process over. Like I can't afford, I'm going to assume, some people can't afford multiple CEDH decks because of the price of the things. Sure, you don't sell your original duels. You trade them back and forth as you need. Mm -hmm. But not everyone has that luxury. Uh, I, I don't know. Like I, I think it's... I think that's where pe that's what I assume is happening when people say they don't want to split format. Uh, I also think like so like I was thinking like competitive EDH. It's hard to define. I get that it's very it's it's difficult because what deck a deck isn't just CEDH. It's, again, it's not like these hard formats. It's it's a it's like a, a, a an ideology from the player kind of right and well okay but can i but 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 we sort of we can't define it by rules but we can sort of define it by decks a lot of the so, top tier yeah. cedh mm -hmm. decks have titles and you True. can say like i'm doing consultation cast it's like i know that cedh right because right. i know and i know what that deck is doing and i know a bunch of the cards in there obviously sure. you can have some tech for the meta but like so so it, and and if if we can just say that these are the CEDH decks 
because we know the few, top few tiers. I think that's tough to do because things change, right? Card, new cards get printed. Things change. Like, yeah. And also, like, what if my way powered down version of that deck is, you know, I'm calling it that because that's what it wants to be. But, like, I might be missing a few cards and I might have subbed in other things. Like, is that a CDH deck? It might not be, really, right? It might not be able to actually, uh, you know, compete in those tiers. But at the same time, it is still the same sort of deck. So I think doing that, I think doing it by deck, which no format does either, is is also difficult. But so what I what I was thinking is, it's like you take you take the where the games are played and, and why they're played, right? So at GPs and or Magic Fest or whatever, those the four player pods, right, that they mm. play for prizes, right? Um, that is a pretty good like example of competitive edh uh you can still go in there with a janky deck and you can try your best but like there's going to be a player in there that's that's you know they got their deck they got their deck tricked out to win as soon as they can because they want those they want those tickets or whatever right um uh and i'm not saying that's everyone i'm just saying like there's odd like you know odds are there's going to be a player or two that's that's like that in there if not all four uh, I just know from playing with some friends that we met at here at GP Toronto, and we kind of run into them every year. Like the like uh, uh, Phil and Bailey, remember like the, yeah. that crew, like good crew, good gang, you know, fun people to play with. Uh, their decks are way more powerful than ours because they are trying to win as soon mm-hmm. as possible because that's their meta and that's great. And that they may they may not even consider themselves competitive EDH players, right? But what I'm thinking is is those pods, those are competitive pods whether you like it or not because they compete for something. They compete for a prize. So you just simply say, hey, the ban list for these is the competitive EDH ban list. And again, I can come and I can bring the deck I'm doing today, Mana Rocks Tribal, I can still bring that to a competitive EDH game if I want. Like, there's no splitting, there's no, like, splitting along that line. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm just not allowed to bring yeah. the broken deck that must be played. You know, I can bring still a janky deck that, meh, I'm going to try my luck at this competitive pod. Let's see how it works, right? It's probably going to get stomped, but we'll see. You know, it's a multiplayer game. Things happen. So you can still do that. Like, I still think there's going to be a lot of intermingling if this were to happen. I still think there's a fair amount of intermingling. You just have to be, you just have to... Um, know that when you're entering a sanctioned game that's force for like a, a prize or you're in a tournament like those are the only official cedh games otherwise when you're playing casually at a gp or something you know you might sit down and be like what you know what format are we playing are we playing this one or this one and then most people will be like who cares and you'll be like great you know what I mean? yeah. and 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 i just want to say this too because this got a little confusing in in the twitter mentions this is not a solve for power level differences in casual commander. I'm not trying to say, let's make CDH its own format so that I don't have to play with them because they are too powerful. Not at all. That is, This is not a solve for that. There is basically no solve for that. That is a thing that exists in commander, will always exist in commander because someone is going to have a... Uh, if we take, even if we took, let's say the top, those like 10% of CEDH players, we move them over to this other format, there's still going to be the top 10% of now this new group yeah. that are going to be more powerful than everyone else too. So it's not, it's not to try and solve anything uh, because there's even players who are going to have CEDH decks and say that they're casual and just still play it. So it's, it's not even trying to solve that problem. Uh, um, that's something you have to solve your own way at your own tables. And we've talked about that a ton and there's all kinds of podcasts and discussions online about that this is simply to give cd cedh players what they want which is a rules committee that like looks at their needs and tries to make it so that their games are not this homogenized thing where you have to run a flash hulk package in every deck that can run it because that's just the way it is and it's optimized and it's you know just what you're saying all the reasons cards are banned in other formats you just need i think you just need a group of people that 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 Pay attention to this one, one specific thing. Para CDH is that what it's called? The the one v one format. Is that oh yeah, called? like they have their own ban list. They have their own thing, and I get that's one v one. There's a hard rules difference there, right? Um, but it's you know it's more like competitive EDH is more akin to that anyways. So yeah. anyways, I mean I don't know. It's, then... it, it, I'm not saying like I'm 100 percent right or anything. Like I just think like I think that competitive players might find that when it comes to bannings and stuff. That they would that their format would be a little better defined and a little and, and a little better just because it's actually dealing with the threats that they want to deal with. Yeah, I think we all want a, the most diverse and interesting format possible. 
right? I don't think any player wants to play in a format where there is basically one one deck to play, and if you're not playing it, you're hoping on the luck of the draw that you get your nut draw or something like that. Yeah. I mean, we banned Prophet of Crufix because it was a must-have in every Simic deck. Yeah. It's like, well, Flash and Protein Hulk are the same thing together, so like, in normal Magic, they usually ban a card when that happens. It becomes yeah. overpowered if, if too many people are playing it, and it seems as though everyone's playing it in competitive EDH. I know that uh, maybe maybe we could just see what would happen. Maybe like people who run tournaments for prizes, maybe they can enact the rule zero of their own tournament. We didn't and even just talk say about rule like, zero. Yeah, rule say, zero. Like, rule zero is that you just agree on the rules before you start because uh, it's a casual format. The issue becomes as soon as you put prizes, you do not get to sit at the table when there are prizes on the lines like, hey, can we rule zero no flash? Yeah. And then everyone's like, exactly. uh, no, because I want these prizes, <laughs> right? Like, you can't do that in a tournament or if there's prizes at an LGS. But an LGS could say, hey, for this season, for the next two months, for the next two leagues or for the next league that we do, however you do your tournaments, a store who does these regularly, or maybe if you do casual ones with your friends, casually competitive tournaments, <laughs> uh, you could just do your own blanket rules. It's like, hey. We're not changing. The, no one's going to ban anything. We can't get the rules committee to do anything they don't want to do. But we can say for the next little while, one league, two games, three matches, whatever, we're going to say no flash. So we want to see what this meta looks like in the next little while if no one plays Flash Hulk. Rule zero is a very you got to fly buzzing around there. Yeah. Rule zero is a very interesting thing. I don't want to. I don't want to. We we got to go out on this one. But um, rule zero is a very interesting point. It's the it's the one that kind of really differs our like makes our format incredibly different than most other Magic formats, uh, and you could argue that competitive EDH already has a different set of rules simply because it doesn't have rule zero essentially, right? Mm, like yeah. it does, I guess, because it's it's not actually a different format. But but you're right. Like when you if you play in competitive EDH, there's no just agreeing to a different house rule. Like they play strictly by the rules, they play strictly by the ban list, and that's yeah. what and that makes sense because you all want to be on the same page. Whereas in our meta, we can say, "Hey, you know what? <laughs> Orzov cards are banned for this game." You know or, what I mean? But like, we could so, do that if we wanted. Some some house rules. I know there. Are, I've heard of groups who say no counter spells because it kind of feels bad. No infinite combos. Yeah. Uh, the commander and gang. You know, uh, Phil. Phil. Um, their their meta used to always play with them. Um, Maximum five infinite combo. And that's just not something you can do in competitive EDH. Yeah. So there's already this difference. Like, there's already this difference. So why not give these players something that's going to help their game, help their their version of the game? Um, you know, sound off on this. I especially, like, and look, we also fully recognize that the two most casual people in a Magic podcast are talking about the most competitive uh, format. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, really, t t to look at this... Um, and there's a host. I'm, there's definitely a host of competitive players who do not want to split. Um, and so, like, go out, seek out those opinions, seek out those things. Uh, that's just our two cents. Um, it's not necessarily right. I just I think it might give those players the things that they're looking for. Um, what do you guys think? Hit us up in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, yeah, uh, we had but a we had a really good discussion. Like, really great discussion. Sheldon Benry. <laughs> Uh, chimed in on ours, uh, the uh, one of the founders of EDH. He was not in favor of a split. He thinks it does nothing to help either format. I think yeah, he's so wrong. You, you've heard our points, and, and I would like to know if you're pro or against a split, but I'm most curious as to why, right? Mm -hmm. If you are pro split, what gets better? And if you're anti split, what would get worse if we do split? I would love to hear those sides from the groups that I don't necessarily relate to as much. Right. Love it. Okay. You know, the the most important thing is we'll we having a fun discussion about this sort of thing and it's like, you know, it's nice to have issues. You know, people <laughs> there's also people who like complain about all the complaining, but like that's also kind of why it's fun to be in like a community, right? We all get to talk about stuff. Yeah, we get to learn about how other people play the best format of the best game. Exactly. Uh so cool. Uh thanks for listening, everyone. We will uh check you next week on the next vlog. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.